Welcome to another episode of Blooms or Orchids in the Dark. Now, I have another little candidate here in the viewfinder who is actually quite elusive and should only be seen at night. Let's have a look-see and see who this little character is. <coughs> Boo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Boo. Well, full disclosure. <clears throat> Dusty leaves. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, this is Jumelia Aborescence. Hmm, this orchid is what I call my little Caspar because it looks like a little ghost. Hence, elusive, you know, get it, get it? Beautiful little bloom. The first bloom of the season. However, we're a little bit quetched there. The spur is still tucked in the leaf. I tried to free it, but I was kind of concerned I was going to break it off. I cannot detect a fragrance. I'm hoping to get four more blooms around about that number coming up for the rest of the blooming this season. Sometimes they overlap. I was lucky enough to see that last year, but they're not very long lasting. Still, with the flashlight on, there's too much reflection. We can't really appreciate the detail of the bloom as well as we could during the day. With a little bit of effort and imagination, we can get into the petals and sepals and look a little bit into the detail there with a little bit of fuzz, but it's just everything seems to get blurred out and outshone by the flash. Seeing this orchid in the dark, <laughs> this orchid it gives me the impression of being very clean during the daytime, much like the leaf that we can see at the bottom of the stem. Um, yeah, well, oops, <laughs> it is rather dusty. That's the only thing that really is highlighted in this shot. Oh, well, we'll see this orchid during the daytime as well at some point, and we can make a comparison if you were to see that video. Right, let's see what else we have lurking in the dark. This looks like one of those old-fashioned swim caps, you know, from back in the 60s, early 70s, <laughs> when you went to the public pool, or the tourists that I used to see in Kenya swimming in the pool, they'd come with these plastic caps and have all kinds of blooms all over them. I found it hilarious because actually those melted in the sun and then they would just sort of stick to your skin and you could see them kind of like, um, yeah, they discarded those supposedly fancy swimming caps very, very quickly. But when I see what I'm looking at through the viewfinder in the dark, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now, I probably did this orchid injustice by not featuring her sooner, but this is Dendrobium nobly, the complex hybrid, the humble Dendrobium nobly. I was just there in my blooming alley and I thought, hang now, while I'm at it, why not have a look and see what Dendrobium nobly looks like, the common commercial one you get anywhere else, you know, in your big box stores or your supermarkets. And I thought, why haven't I tried this orchid in the dark? Just because she's a commoner, just because, you know, there's nothing really <clears throat> special about her, but who is to define what makes an orchid special, if not the blooms? And I love the blooms during the day. They have been blessing me with their fragrance for the past five weeks, easily, easily, if not more. You can see she is not done yet. I have some blooms that I've had removed, but yeah, when I put the flash on her, I thought, girl, why have you not featured her sooner? So here she is. Can you believe the gorgeousness of this orchid at night? Ah, oh, never underestimate a dendrobium, no matter what dendrobium it is. They can perform day and night. It is one of those little energizer bunny orchids. <laughs> Not only do they bloom for a very, very long time, especially these commercial nobilies, they come with a lot of pixie dust on their petals and sepals. And this one chucks the fragrance at you of gorgeous spring freesias. Amazing. I did this orchid a great injustice by not featuring her sooner. But here she is. Now we have. Oh, and I did another injustice by laughing at her because I thought of a plastic swimming cap. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> this orchid really, really deserves a lot better than me giggling away in the dark. The appreciation I have for this orchid has just risen another notch up there for being super superb, super special, very beautiful, and what a performer. How did I miss it up until now? Better late than never, they say, right?
Okay, I cheated. Before you switch off your screens and say, well, this is garbage, what's the point of this exercise? Bear with me. Just bear with me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this is Lelia Esalkiana. Rapiculus Lelias will always take a spotlight in my collection, whether they show up as pristine, gorgeous as they are during daytime, even though at night they look like this. <laughs> well, not all of them did. I've had some beautiful ones in the dark already, and I must say they did a great job. But let's look at the true color of this Lelia Esalkiana when I go in a little bit closer. And trust me, I did try to get that same effect with the tripod and the camera on the tripod. Turns out, the closer you get to the bloom, the true colors come through. And isn't it typical for small blooms? In order to appreciate them, you really have to get in closer. They literally force you to take a close look. And a simple tripod with a camera and a flashlight, they're not having it. So here we are. This is Lelia Esalkiana in her true yellow color. The bloom this year is not exactly perfect. There are some bruises on a petal and a sepal, which is surprising. Last year, she bloomed for me beautifully on two spikes, and in total, I had five blooms. Don't know what the difference is this year. Maybe I wasn't fertilizing enough during the spring because our spring was so horrendous. Either way, it is not the same as it was last year. I have no solution to that question with the exception that, at least, she graced me with one bloom this year and she even shows the pixie dust at night. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Charming little bloom. You gotta get close to appreciate her. The moment you step away and say, yeah, it's yellow and move on, that magic will elude you. So we can do a before and after. Before and after. <laughs> See what I mean? She's a cutie. Okay. I'm going to take your imagination to a vegetable garden and I'm going to ask you to think of going around looking for strawberries and you're going to be picking strawberries because that is what this reminds me of. <laughs> Maxillarium tenuefolia. Look, it is some grassy bit of goodness and then there's pops of red in there which remind me of strawberries, but in the orchid world. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? Yeah, we're going to go in. We're going to go in. It was a little bit difficult to film the B-roll, but we're going to go in and excuse me if an occasional leaf covers the viewfinder, but we will be digging our way through this gorgeous pot of orchid strawberry goodness and looking at the blooms a little bit closer because truly they are magnificent. This is amazing how the flash can really highlight and enhance the lip and the throat and all that nonsense that is going on in the back there. Pretty much reminds me of Ancelia Africana with the stripes and the spotting and the oranges. Just a little bit more solid in color but no less interesting and how they pop through and how bright the colors are at night in comparison to during the day. There's a completely different richness about this red matching a little bit with the orange, whereas during the day, you, well, you know, unless I have shade, I see a little bit more orange and yellow, but not this bright, vibrant red. Incredible. At least not for my Maxillaria variabilis. It's the first time I see the colors for what they can truly be. I love it. Absolutely love it. So, you found the strawberries yet? <laughs> well, well, well. Who'd have thought? I am so glad that it is finally a wind still night because this would be impossible to film if the wind were blowing a hoolie on top of trying to get in between all the structures to get close to the blooms and see them for what they're worth. And they are worth a lot. Mmm. Midnight snack. Orchid strawberries and cream. Yum. With a hint of coconut. No, she's not fragrant at night, but still, you know what I mean. <laughs> that would be a snack to sit around and have a chin mag with, right? Beautiful. Stunning. Yeah, I'm impressed with this one. Amazing. Love it. 
orchid giveaway. <laughs> this is a long dangly orchid. Oh, I keep forgetting that I have her in bloom. Can you believe it? Oh, and she is beautifully fragrant. She doesn't need the flashlight, but let's put the viewfind out of its misery. <laughs> Coilostylus parkinsoniana. Look at this. Look at this. The other two buds have not opened yet, but these two have now been open for five days and they look beautiful and they smell beautiful. So it's not a washout like the Brassavola tuberculata was. This one is fragrant at night and yet still looks pretty under the flashlight. Except for the fact that the petals and sepals here look a little bit on the... Yeah, yellowy beige kind of tinge they are in actual fact green because these blooms are still relatively fresh so at night it's giving us the impression as though the bloom was already four or five weeks old because i am expecting longevity out of these blooms oh my goodness in the b-roll footage i'm hoping you can see the details of the flower spike there is texture, there is movement, there are different colors on that flower spike. Just amazing. Also, what I love about this orchid, not just the blooms looking so elegant and standing out of the leaf so proud, it's the lace of the sheath that gives it such an added touch of elegance that otherwise would be lacking somehow. The backdrop of that sheath being so delicate and lacy, it's almost like some form of Belgian lace just draped along right at the back to give it a little bit more interest and texture. And then also under the flashlight, that sparkles. Everything that you see white on that sheath is not pests or anything like that. That is part and parcel of the structure of the sheath. Gorgeous divine. Oh yes, I did mention she was fragrant, but I didn't tell you what she smells like. Hey, <laughs> scratch and sniff. Not just yet. Sadly, this technology doesn't exist, or I would be able to share with you a citrus fragrance that is very citrusy, but you have to kind of get close. You don't have to stick your nose into the bloom per se to appreciate it, but you know, if you're around 50 centimeters away, you know that this orchid is in bloom with her gorgeous, fresh, citrusy fragrance. There's no hint of cream, none of that. I just smell a gorgeous lemon rind. Very, very refreshing very very beautiful and i'm well pleased that she is not a washout at night and even we can see on the lip how there is still some creasing it's just amazing there's some crinkles there's a little bit of texture on the lip as well it's not just smooth fabulous absolutely exquisite i love it so happy this orchid bloomed for me considering what she's been through early spring we still have two more buds to come, so hey hey, if they form nicely and present themselves, I might just feature this orchid one more time on an episode of Orchids in the Dark. It's impossible to be sneaky when the blooms themselves light up in the dark. So let's not delay any further and look at this gorgeous, gorgeous Lelia purpurata variety striata. <laughs> Mercy me, mercy me. Look at this gorgeousness. My first time bloomer, I cannot believe it, but I do have a few funky things going on with these blooms. Three blooms, first time bloomer, very happy to say, not disappointed at all. However, one lip has the column sticking out right over the top of it. The next bloom has the column with one part of the lip curled over it and the other part underneath it. And I have the third bloom where the column is nicely tucked away inside the lip, the way it is supposed to be. Very, very strange. I did not manhandle or fandangle anything with these blooms. However, the detail is so gorgeous. In other videos, I have been gushing about the proportions of Lelia purpurata blooms the symmetry. I just, it is so pleasing to my eye. There is a balance and the way the sepals stand proud like an antenna reaching out on top of the bloom and then three of them together like that. I just think these blooms speak of everything that signifies and personifies, if we can call it that, 
an orchid. It hardly surprises me that there's people dedicated to just growing purpuratas, but they would only have one season to enjoy the blooms, and it is this season, late spring, early summer. I don't have a fragrance on this orchid during the day. Maybe next year I will be able to detect a fragrance, but wow. Since she has graced my blooming alley, it has been enhanced a tad. Let's just say a touch of class has entered my blooming alley. There is a chrysaline effect. There are little shiny bits all over her beautiful petals and sepals. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear that the light would pick up on that. It's a pity because she sparkles during the day and she sparkles at night from what I can tell with the naked eye. The viewfinder can't seem to pick that up. Oh, the richness of that lip, though, as it goes into the throat. If I can say about the colors, I would be really picky now to say that we're slightly off, but we are just a tad off. There's still more depth and more richness to the dark color in the lip than what we can see on the viewfinder under the flash. But it is so minute, it is almost ridiculous that I even bring it up. But yeah, just for the sake of being thorough about the description, of what I'm seeing with my eyes and what I'm seeing in the viewfinder. Just thought I would mention that detail, but my goodness, what a bloom, what a show, what a pleasure to have this orchid in my collection and finally have her as a blooming size. Incredible. And while we're at it, we're going to stick with the theme of elegance and beauty and proportions. And you can see I don't even have to put the flash on. This orchid is reflecting everything that's coming off the white facade. And dare I say that some of her sparkles are also highlighted more intensely. Oh my goodness, let me just show you. This is Lelia Purpurata. Variety back Häuseri. She opened three days ago. <sighs> All my orchids are my favorites, but you know, when you see blooms like this, you just go, oh, this has got to be my favorite orchid, but <laughs> it is just a difficult decision to make. But no, when she blooms, she also graces my blooming alley with an elegance that is second to none. The lip that you see has this vintage lavender to it, a deepness about it. It's a little bit more dirty, if I may say so, in real life, but I'm liking how the camera is picking up this color and interpreting it. I do like it as well. It's a little bit more on the grayish, more old style, even with the naked eye, but the pristineness of that white of the petals and the sepals, plus the pixie dust sparkles on them, absolutely insane. I can go gaga over this bloom. I have two blooms on this orchid. One is a little bit wonky because of where she was getting her buds prepped <laughs> for blooming. The second bloom is a little bit off and not quite as straight and presentable because that was facing the facade of the east side of my patio. So the whole bud opened up straight according to the orchid based on her light source, but not according to me and my naked eye. So it's a little bit of a one bloom, you know, has to be the, the show off. <laughs> Separate itself from the other one, so to speak. It doesn't matter to me. They are absolutely beautiful. My first year that I bloomed this orchid after I got her as a near blooming size, she bloomed relatively quickly in my collection, and that is why I'm so astounded that the striata took so long to bloom. This one is a more smaller, compacter orchid, and she bloomed for me a year after I received her and has been reliable ever since. But I did get three blooms out of her the first year, and then subsequent years I've gotten two blooms out of her. I can accept two blooms. I don't have to push for three blooms, especially if they start to crowd up against each other and block each other out. Then, you know, you don't really get to see how beautiful each bloom is because they're kind of squished together. But these blooms, they are just the epitome, epitome of elegance and beauty. Can you imagine, indulge me, but can you imagine a beautiful gown with these colors, just pristine white, and then an accent of that vintage lavender somewhere? Maybe it's just a belt or a sachet that goes down the side of the gown. This bloom makes me want to sit down and get creative. I absolutely adore this Lelia Purpurata variety Verkhoiserie. Having seen the others, I don't think you need to guess what is going on in this viewfinder right now. 
I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control and I think I like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bring on the straitjacket. I know. <laughs> I'm standing out here way past midnight giggling and singing to myself, but how can you not? Oh, this is Lelia purpurata, Variety Backhäuseri Striata. A mouthful, but goodness me, the blooms deserve such a long name. It's like announcing some kind of a noble aristocratic count into the ballroom. Lelia purpurata, Variety Backhäuseri Striata. Holding the gloved invitation and name card as the person stands in this grand entree staircase and then goes down the stairs. No, I do not see a lady next to him. <laughs> oh my goodness, sorry for being so silly, but when I look at this, I am desperately trying to capture the pixie dust that these petals and sepals have when I look at this with the naked eye, with the flash on it. It seems like my three preparatas being in bloom have this beautiful, beautiful feature and it is so difficult to capture with a camera even under the flashlight. There's another thing I wonder if you've noticed as we went into the lip and tried to get into the column. It's like the whole nose and the pollinia and everything like that looks like one of those big fat baby floats at the Macy's parade, at the Thanksgiving parade. I don't know if you recognize that. Oh, there's so much going on in my head, I can't even keep my thoughts straight. How can you not go all gaga when you look at this? This is chef's kiss material. Oh, I love it. No fragrance at night, though. I think that would just knock me out and, well, Maybe that wouldn't be such a bad thing because then I would be quiet and you could enjoy the blooms just with the crickets in the background. Oh, I just can't help myself. I'm sorry. Oh, this is beautiful. And you know what the bonus about all of this is? The colors are true. I don't have to describe the vintage lavender that I'm seeing. This is exactly what I'm seeing during the daytime and at night. The camera is picking up the real thing. So in future, if I'm trying to describe the color of the Weckhäuseries, I am just going to put in the night image, the photo that I took prior to filming this clip because it's like, bam, there you've got it. That is the lavender I'm talking about. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh. <sighs> Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching. <laughs> thank you for putting up with my enthusiasm and I hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it <laughs> and having just the time of my life seeing these blooms just light up my head and oh my goodness, I think I'm going to have to get myself some chamomile tea before I get to settle down and go to bed. <laughs> No, maybe I should get some hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. We'll get some hot chocolate. Goodness me, it's cold enough in June anyway. I digress. <laughs> oh, everybody, thank you so very, very much. Your time is appreciated. Have yourselves a beautiful day. On one condition, though, that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye. <coughs>